what is semiconductor and what are its properties hey friends today we will learn about semiconductors first of all our material is classified into three basic categories that is conductors insulators and semiconductors in case of insulators the difference between valence band and conduction band is too high for an electron to jump from valence band and conduction to conduction band and conduct electricity thus it acts as insulator now in case of conductor the valence band and conduction band overlaps but in case of semiconductor they are separated by moderate distance and it is less than 3 electron volts talk about intrinsic semiconductor and extrinsic semiconductor intrinsic semiconductor are pure semiconductors in this no impurities is added example of intrinsic semiconductor is pure silicon and pure germanium as you know silicon atom has four valence electrons in its valence in its outermost shell every silicon atom share its four valence electron with its four neighbors and also take share of one electron from each neighbor thus all atoms complete their octet these shared electron pairs form covalent bond now at absolute zero temperature you won't find any conduction so no electrons are available for conduction and silicon behaves like an insulator at zero temperature but at room temperature due to due to thermal energy the electrons from valence band jump to the conduction band and when the electron jumps to conduction band a hole is created and this hole positive charge particle or you can say it's just an absence of electron so the number of electron is equal to the number of holes now when an external voltage will be applied then a current will be produced and this current will be the sum of the current due to electron and the current due to holes so this was about intrinsic semiconductor now moving ahead to extrinsic semiconductor what happens in extrinsic semiconductor is as you have seen earlier in intrinsic semiconductor current is produced but the value is very much less and it can't be used for practical applications so in order to use we need to add impurities to it which can modify its conductivity permanently Conductivity of an intrinsic semiconductor can be increased by adding impurities to it. This process is called as doping, and the impurity atom is called as dopant. Now you can add two types of impurity, that is pentavalent impurity and a trivalent impurity. First of all, extrinsic semiconductor is classified into two types, that is p-type and n-type. Let's look at the n-type semiconductor. in what happens in case of n type semiconductor is that add a pentavalent impurity to the silicon crystal the pentavalent impurity means the atom is going the atom has five electron in its valence shell electron of the pentavalent atom will be used for the formation of covalent bond but there exist an extra electron and this electron is available for conduction so this Every pentavalent atom donates one electron for conduction and thus it is called as donor impurity. In this case, the semiconductor has large number of electrons in conduction band and the conductivity is due to negatively charged electrons and thus it is called as n type semiconductor. In this case, the majority charge carrier are electrons whereas the minority charge carriers are holes. Moving ahead, let's see what is a p type semiconductor. now the name itself suggests in p type the majority charge carrier are going to be holes whereas the minority charge carrier are going to be electrons in p type semiconductor we add a trivalent impurity to the silicon crystal trivalent atom has 3 electrons in valence orbit each trivalent dopant atom share its 3 electrons with 3 neighboring silicon atoms to form covalent bond but there is an absence of one electron since or vacancy is called as hole it has the tendency to accept an electron 
for this reason this impurity is called as an acceptor impurity in this case the holes can move and contribute to current as this semiconductor has large number of holes and conductivity is because of positively charged holes it is called as a p type semiconductor i hope the difference between p type and n type semiconductor is clear next topics will be covered in the future videos thank you so much for watching